Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is not how I expected to start my morning off February 8th, 2023. What we're going to be jumping into today is a official federal lawsuit against Onision. Yes, that is right. Today, we're going to be going through all 48 pages of the filing that was filed today, February 8th. Regina versus... Google, YouTube LLC, James Jackson, also known as Onision, Lucas Jackson, formerly also known as Laneybot, Laney, or Kai. Um, I did not know that they recently changed their name to Lucas Jackson, so that is new to me. I wonder how many more times they're going to try to change their name with this. Um, but here we are. This is a jury trial demanded, so this could be very, very big in the coming months. Uh, but we're going to go through this for the complaint. Uh, step paragraph by paragraph, um, and here we go. This is a civil action for damages against YouTube and its parent company, Google, James Jackson, known online as Onision, and Lucas Jackson, formerly known as law online as Laney, Botter, Laney, or Kai, on defendant's conduct when it's granted agency or and slash profit sharing relationship to a predator, Onision, and use YouTube to identify, recruit, solicit, and groom children and coordinated, coordinated with his spouse, Laney, to lure, entice, and solicit children for the ultimate goal of engaging in naughty activity with them plaintiff was one of these victims plaintiff respectfully submits her complaint for damages and makes the following advertisements this lawsuit will reveal how google's youtube partnership program through the youtube platform enabled facilitated and profit shared in the identification of grooming of vulnerable children by two adult predators known as onision and laney the defendant, James Jackson Onision, is a predator who, when faced with the allegations raised against him, began a series of attacks against victims online in an effort to intimidate and threaten his victims into silence. Defendant Lucas Jackson Kai Lenibot Kai is married to James Jackson Onision and used his new fame Onision's spouse to lure and entice underage children to engage in sexual acts and exchange child abuse material images with her online. That's a huge claim. And one that, as far as I'm aware, is substantiated by evidence. All predators must identify vulnerable individuals that could become their potential victims. Once a victim or a pool of victims is identified, the predator must find a way to recruit, lure, entice, and corral those victims into their web so that they, the predator might be able to snare them for illicit purposes. Part of ensnaring a victim is a process called grooming. Grooming is a deceptive process enacted by a would-be abuser in, in which the per perpetrator selects a victim, gains access to it, isolates the victim, develops trust, dependency on the victim's mind, and desensitizes the victim to sexual content and physical contact. A sophisticated predator is skilled at creating confusion, deception, and doubt, but simultaneously gaining trust, acceptance, and affection of or love from the victim. A predator will charm others and convince the responsible adults around the victim that nothing is amiss or should be concerning. Then goes into a little bit about his background, James Jackson, his YouTube channel, um, how his channel develops extremely quickly. At his peak, Onision had 2 million subscribers. Uh... Specifically, Onision appealed to minor females like plaintiff who were young, vulnerable, and questioning their self-image and identity and were seeking answers and guidance. YouTube's product and non-neutral algorithms specifically targeted minors with these interests and suggested Onision's harmful and controversial content to minor and teen users. This is interesting to me because it, it definitely creates a conversation on how exactly YouTube's algorithm works. Um, I don't know how true or not true this is, but certainly if this goes to trial, this I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how this develops in terms of how the algorithm works with YouTube, because this could or could not be an actual valid argument that they make. I don't know, though. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I'm actually a deep-voiced woman. Special thanks to the sponsor of the channel today, Raycon. What you're looking at right here is their everyday earbuds, and these are a fraction of the price of your normal premium earbuds that you're going to purchase on the market. They're not only high-quality, comfortable, they have noise isolation, they are water and sweat resistant, they have custom gel tips to fit in your ear perfectly for all different sizes, over 50,000 five-star reviews, but most of all, they're a fraction of the price. If you go to buyraycon.com slash Repsion, you're going to get 15% off your order. Next week is Valentine's Day, so now is the perfect time to find the perfect gift. Support the channel, click the link down below, and try Raycon out for yourself.
2009, he gained blah, 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 his banana song. We don't care. We know this. Uh, when a person becomes monetized, we know this. Joining the YouTube partnership. Uh, YPP stands for YouTube Partnership Program. Uh, it's basically describing YouTube's partners agree to file, follow and abide by the YouTube terms of service and community guidelines. And this is an interesting point to mention here. Um, there had been a lot of content that Greg had made in the past that I know violates YouTube's terms of service. And those videos will, were never struck or removed as far as I'm aware. Um, a lot of the content that he made, even when he exploited um, Billy, who was somebody who had a abortion, um, he outed that publicly on his YouTube channel, basically like mocking her and um, attacking her and just revealing all these personal, private, intimate details about her life on the Internet, um, all because she got away from him. It, it blows my mind how a lot of that content that he made never was actually removed by YouTube, because according to YouTube's own policy, that would follow under fall under harassment, um, bullying, if you really want to take it that far. But it's just it's it, it blows my mind that it took as long as it did for his channel to even be demonetized um, by YouTube. And it was all after the Chris Hansen publicity shit that went down that it really was taken seriously because he has he has broken so many rules, guys. I can't stress to you. This man has filed the most copyright strikes on any one person ever, I think, period, on the platform. And, you know, YouTube specifically states that if you file fraudulent copyright strikes on people, that your channel will be terminated. And that's never actually happened with him. Uh, he's, he's filed uh, over 30 copyright strikes on me over the last 10 years. Every single one of those videos, though, got restored. Because when you file a copyright strike on somebody, even if it's false, you have to prove with a court order to keep a video down. But he, he never does that. Just It's just frustrating. It's frustrating that YouTube did so much not to actually tackle the abuse that he was doing in regards to copyright striking people. And it's just never been taken seriously. It still isn't for the most part. Onision ran several YouTube channels. Onision Speaks. Uh-oh, bro. Onision Encore. Onision Archive. Lanny Bot and Cool Guy Kai. They were all monetized. Onisan used his fame and platform to objectify children to form relationships with underage girls to entice them to groom them and arrange transportation across state lines to further, further grooming and sexual activity. This, as far as I'm aware, this sentence here is true. Um, I'm speaking off the cuff here, but his and Laney's relationship was very odd. Um, I know he drove out of state specifically to get out of the state of Washington so he could meet her and do things. Uh with her, Lainey, that is, or Taylor Anderson, I guess they're going by their legal name now. New CM began pursuing 17-year-old Taylor Anderson, Kai, internet celebrity, celebrity, Taylor alleged to change her name several times. 2012, Lainey and Onision got married. Onision introduced Lainey Bot to her followers. Yeah. YouTube was put on notice many times that Onision was violating YouTube's terms of service and community guidelines, but YouTube took no action to deter the demonetization of Onision based on the numerous complaints for violative, co violative content he posted. YouTube was receiving a value profit sharing, blah, blah, blah. YouTube continued to allow their partner and post content, which in turn recruited, lured, and enticed Regina to reach out to Lainey through the Onision forums. This is a huge thing. The Onision forums, and I have a few videos um, of this when I actually go up in depth of the forms his forms were wild he used to make these videos like am i hot or pretty right and in these videos specifically he would ask people to post photos of them um themselves on his web forms and the web forms had and there's documented evidence of post after post after i have this in one of my own ecn videos i don't know which one but posts of people saying hey i'm 12 years old here's me writing onision on my arm and here i'm going to Post this in a scantily clad whatever you know they're clothed but still i have his you know basically branding themselves this happened i've seen it there's web posts proving that they were between ages 12 and like 15 years of age tons of them um on these old web forms it, it's a real it's a real thing very disturbing stuff um Laney, Laney befriended Regina after flirting with and grooming Regina from age 14 through year 17 year old. Laney invited Regina to visit her and Onision in their home in Washington State. Rena, Regina attempted to go, but her mother refused to travel. Good for her mom for allowing that. That's really important. Um, that's true. Uh, Laney quickly began replacing her next victim, a girl named Sarah. Laney used Regina unknown, unknownst to her to gain trust with Sarah as well. 
parties. Regina resides in Florida. Regina is, I don't know this legal term, sui juris. At all the times, Regina, at all relevant times, Regina was a minor. That we know. All right, what else do we do? Skip, skip. Da, 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 da. Since 2006, all around jurisdiction venue. This stuff really isn't. It's a quarter subject. I'm, I'm reading this along with you guys, so just bear with me here. I'm looking at what's actually relevant to, to read out loud. The court has personal jurisdiction over YouTube defendants for additional reasons. They have engaged in substantial, systematic, continuous contacts with the state by... Factual allegations. All right, here we are. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. You know, through decades, goes, Congress passed the Communications Decency Act of 1996, uh, accomplished several things, include to promote the free exchange of information and ideas over the internet, to encourage voluntary monitoring of offensive obscene material. Since passage, the internet has grown and is no longer through fragile new means of communication, but rather a prominent, prominent medium of communications and commerce, commerce nationwide, if not would. Uh, here we go. The act is designed for tend to offer an immunity and liability shield for criminal conduct such as sex trafficking, prostitution, or the exploitation of children that occurred on or through online platforms. All right. YouTube has more blah, blah, blah. Just more YouTube information. Google monetizes YouTube platform for advertising revenue as well as non-advertising. Advertising revenue is derived from YouTube ads. We all know how this works. YouTube, which saw approximately 20 billion profits in 2020 and approximately 28 billion in 2020, accumulates massive amounts of revenue from its advertising. Between March 20th to February 12th, 2021, YouTube's top advertisers spent over $1 billion. That's crazy to me. It talks about the YouTube partnership program eligibility, watch time. We know these things. Joining the partner pro program is optional. Uh, let's keep going. This is... YouTube's recommend generating... More than 70% of the videos watched on YouTube... Our videos recommended by YouTube's non-neutral algorithm. Is it non-neutral though? D is from what I understand, the algorithm is selected. At least front page stuff is selected by actual staff at YouTube. That's what I've been told. I don't know how true that is. But I don't know if it's really non-neutral algorithm. I feel like the algorithm is very specific and caters to certain things. But I could be completely wrong. YouTube allows YouTube partners to monetize the platform, generate revenue, and including YouTube partners to violate the community guidelines and prohibit sexual exploitation. This is true. In the community guidelines, YouTube does make it very clear that, that you're, this is one of their, their rules. YouTube's product was built to promote hate. YouTube's product was built to promote hateful, harmful, and controversial content in its most engaging users, including the minors. YouTube in turn pays its YouTubers paying from $0.50 cents to $6 USD per thousand views on any video, including materials depicting minors and other criminal statutes. This is true. For those of you who don't know, I get paid per thousand views. Everybody does. If you're with, like, monetization, you you could be $0.50 cents per thousand views, $10 per thousand views. If the ads are really good month at, like, the end of the year, I've had to go up to, like, $9 per thousand views. So just to give you a little estimate of how revenue works... You have his employed entire revenue share. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, skip, 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 skip. The rise of Onision to become one of the most influential pers personas online, along with his spouse Lainey. This is true. You, I don't. People really forget how large of a person Onision used to be on this platform. I'm talking the views he used to get on his videos were astronomical. He used to be one of the biggest YouTubers, um, and it's just crazy. With time, what happens? It even ha it's even happening with Shane Dawson right now. Like your viewers, when you when you cater to such a young audience, right? Your content specifically deals with young kids. That's what it caters to. Thankfully, my audience is not that. They've grown with me all into adulthood. But uh, a lot of these young people just stop watching their content creators that they watched when they were a kid or a young teen. You know. It's very, very common, more common than you think. That's why Shane Dawson doesn't get the amount of views that he used to do get on his channel is because a lot of these people have moved on and grown off from their content. It's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It's just what happens when your content doesn't adapt, which is something that a lot of creators can't seem to do, which is why I'm still here. I'm still making content because I've always tried to adapt, even if I don't like the adapt adapting that I have to do, you know? Onision targeted underage girls in private content that appealed to that age group, such as comments on body image, appearance, self-identity, suicide ideology, and similar topics. Onision would rate and comment pictures of people on their bodies, often sent them by. This is true, as mentioned with the forums. 
he was very active in his forums um very weird when you're giving making videos dedicated so he had a excuse me he had a video series where he would post pictures of these girls and they were minors many of them were minors post them on his youtube videos right and he would rate them on like oh you're beautiful on one to ten oh you're you're you know maybe you could lose a little weight in your tummy or things like that it's just really like well it, it i can't believe that's it this is finally actually being brought up in a lawsuit it's crazy to me because it was really it was horrible stuff it's problematic stuff and i don't use that word problematic often but it's real like you shouldn't be taking pictures of minors on a web form and posting them in a youtube video and then rating their bodies like men or women i don't care who you are like it's teens don't need that level of well, how do I even word this? Uh, confidence, dist confidence boost or destruction. Because honestly, when you have a content creator who's literally rating people's bodies on a YouTube video that's getting half a million views, if you say something like, oh, you could lose a little bit of weight, that can really send a young teen into like a mental break. That's It's not good. Teens shouldn't be looking up to YouTubers as idols, Period. Period. Despite pushback from the online community... Onision's damaging and negative commentary to young teen girls. He rebuffed it by claiming he was being honest. That is true. Me this is. <laughs> it's funny. This is being honest. It's true. I'm the most honest YouTuber. I say it how it is. While he simultaneously tells somebody that they're super fat or whatever, and then they destroys their self confidence. Yes, honesty. You can be honest but not be an asshole. You can be honest and still not say horrible, mean things. He also posted a comment he claimed was comedy, but it was actually a smear campaign against his ex-girlfriends in an effort to publicly humiliate them. This is true. August 5th, 2005, Onision married his first wife, Sky Jackson. Uh, this is true. Onision began to isolate Sky and prevent her associate with friends and family. Onision produced several videos online with Sky. Blah, 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 blah. Discharge. Onision was discharged from the Air Force. <laughs> uh... Onision targeted minor audience and YouTube specific target minors with emotional vulnerabilities and pre-existing trauma experiences as eating disorders, eating disorders, suicidal ideation, mental health disorders. This is true. Uh, how many videos did he make on a Eugenia Cooney, right? Same time, Onision rose to popularity. He was com commenting on doing skits portraying other YouTubers doing popular like Shane Dawson. 2010, they divorced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at this. This is wonderful. This is exactly what I was just talking about. During his tenure as a YouTube page partnership program, Onision posted videos and other content specifically targeting teens and users and their insecurities with certain video titles. Am I pretty? Am I ugly or not? Should people shave their legs? How to flirt with girls? How to tell if you're circumcised? How to ask someone on a, to date you? How, how skinny is too skinny? How to give a hickey? And mind you, am I ugly or not, right? I don't think these videos even exist anymore. They're not, I, I don't know. I haven't looked, um, but this is a lot of these, some of these video titles. I know for a fact, these are the con, this is the content that he posted on his channel, rating people's bodies. And they, a lot of them were minors that is established. It's, it's just inappropriate. It's it, completely inappropriate. Uh, let's see. Slept for, she has slept with more than 20 people. This is not really, did uh, one reporter specific take like Google not only on his heart. What is whose quote is this? I'm disgusted by this. I don't know who's the daily dot Onision VidCon haters YouTube banned. Oh my God. This is such an old article for those of you guys who don't know. Onision was banned from VidCon 2012. Uh, I remember that because I remember parents reached out to VidCon specifically when it was happening because Onision announced that he was going there and parents emailed specifically. I think it was Hank. Isn't it Hank? Uh, the the Green Brothers, John Green or whatever, they got emailed. A bunch of parents called, emailed them and said, "Hey, Onision's going here. We don't want our kids going to VidCon because our kids. We don't feel safe about our kids going here when this guy has made all these types of videos about kids and just raiding their bodies and posting their photos on the internet. It's just it's weird. We don't want them." And he was banned. And when Onision was banned from VidCon, he threw a gigantic hissy fit like he normally does. On um, doesn't mention it. Oh, 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 it does. Viewers wrote, wrote to VidCon on an upcoming convention, which Onision was scheduled to speak at. YouTube took no action to reinforce the community guidelines. This is, oh my God, this is fascinating. VidCon acted differently. However, they responded to the communications received by Onision, speaker of VidCon, and banning him from attending. Onision responded to the social media acknowledging, if you want someone to blame for my absence, you can blame the haters who spammed VidCon with anti-Onision mail. VidCon itself for giving the pressure and going back on their word. Oh, get fucked, buddy. Get fucked. I, I'm honestly, I completely forgot about this stuff. 
Ah, this is the beginning of their relationship publicly with Lainey. Soulmate, where are you? I've actually, I've covered this stuff in my content in the past, so I'm not going to really get into the specifics. They got married in 2014, uh, 2012. Nusian's YouTube channel, the content discussed attracted young teenage girls. As his wife, Lainey became part of the Nusian story and gained popularity attraction. That is true. Onision created forums that in, promoted in every and almost every video posted his YouTube channels. Onision would then comment on what he said to him and the young teen bodies of YouTube videos. Yep. Onision forums were overseen by Onision and Laney. Any moderators of the forum offer. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's true. Minors were impressionable. Young teens were the primary age group and were drawn to Onision YouTube channels. You know, I may actually have to talk. I may have to contact this lawyer firm uh, and send them my videos i don't know which video it is because i have some i have over 1500 videos right and send them the form post because i have the form post somewhere on a video all right um you see on public inviting their followers including their child followers respond what age does this is such a why why what age does greg think you are do you not realize how weird that is like why is he would you rate me one to ten? Would Laney Bot date you? Hot or not, Laney Bot chooses. Mary, blah blah. Are your boobs actually too small or big? What Onision's opinion of you? Would you date me? Makeup or no? Hot or not? Show off. Show off your body ad abnormalities. What does Laney think about your body? God, I don't even. I didn't even know about some of these videos. These were videos that were made on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do, you not, do you not see the glaring problem with this? What does Laney think about your body? Maybe you shouldn't be thinking about minors' bodies and, and rating them to begin with. It's so f weird. Young people, including minors, would join these forums in hopes that Onision would com communicate with them, and which they sometimes did. That is true. Onision often commented on forums of his YouTube giving his the name fan and... Oh, I can't speak, sorry. Sorry if I'm reading. I, have, I struggle with reading. I have Alexia, so... Some of the moderators were children themselves... I don't know about, I don't know how true that statement is, but um, the volunteer monitors were ne never received trainer or genuine guidance on how to properly moderate forms, prevent predators from communicating with minors of the children forms, what, what grooming looks like, and other policies to keep them safe. All right. Onision's acknowledgement of commentary from his fans in his YouTube videos has caused his fans to be more eager to send him contact and reach out. In 2012, a young child named Regina, who was 12 years old, was depressed and Googled how to da da da. Regina found Onision's video that shamed anyone who wanted to blah 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 themselves and found a con connection. Regina began to watch Onision videos, felt very deep connected. She became a huge fan. Oh, these are the. Oh, I don't. Really, I haven't even seen these. These are old Instagram messages. Cool guy Kai and Regina. You're my favorite Instagrammer. Do you have any song from your favorite band? Okay. Regina turned 15 years old, approximately one month after meeting Lainey. Regina initially told Lainey that she was 19 years old, but quickly clarified the real age was 15. Lainey was not deterred from sexually pursuing Regina upon finding out her real age. This is true. Lainey continued to flirt, groom, and condition Regina when she was 15 years, of, years old. This is also established, by the way. There's actual tweets to back this up somewhere. Lainey frequently highly sexualized conversations with Regina. That is true. I've seen those. At the time, Regina was a young teen herself, not old enough to fully understand the boundaries that was happening on appropriate forums. While 16 year old Regina confided in Lainey that she was bisexual and questioning her gender. Lainey encouraged this conversation to say that she liked girls too, leading to Regina that she was being with Lainey in a romantic ways. Da 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 da. Nucion and Lainey began publicly talking about on YouTube about having a polyamorous relationship with other girls. Mm mm mm. Here we go. This is getting in the meat and the. This is getting into the, the juice here or the the real stuff. Although it was presented an opportunity for Laney with Bo. Da, 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 da. Nucian would engage in threesome sex acts with other girls and use Laney as bait to lure them in. Yep, this is true. Nucian demanded a threesome and say that he will no, not allow Laney to have sex with other girls unless he participates. That is so crazy. I do remember. I do remember that somewhere online. He said this someplace. I don't remember. God, that's crazy. Regina had just turned 17. Ah, dating. Ah, here we go. Here's the old tweets. Dating uh, Regina. Now it's official. In other news, I'm totally sending Regina nudes. Come get this good good. Oh, so cringe. I'm in love with you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
They sent photos, lewd photos depicting Lainey in her bra and underwear and low-cut shirt, and were supposed to leave the viewer thirsty for more due to sexual innuendos contained in the photos. That's true, I've seen those. Lainey had Skype calls, in addition to thirst response. Uh, in response, Lainey demands Regina send an image of her exposed to Lainey. Separately, in response, Lainey demands Reg Regina send an image of her exposed to Lainey. Oof. Uh, Lainey offered to pay all of Regina's travel expenses. Lainey intended to lure, entice, and recruit, solicit Regina into their home so she could join in sexual activity with Regina and have threesome acts with Onisi and Lane together. This is a lot. Around the same time, Sarah joined a kick chat group for Lainey fans, became friends on underage moderator, Regina and the group the group. In the grooming process, it's common for predators to use one victim to access other victims and invoke loyalty and trust by giving their victims by making loyalty and... Yup, this is true. As a result, Regina readers understood what was being groomed by Lainey, and each believed sexual contact could result in these conversations. Throughout 2015, Sarah Regina and 20-year-old Lainey formed a strong friendship and began a group chat called The Three Musketeers. When grooming minors, many predators will talk about sex with their target to desensitize the child so that the sexual commentary feels normal and commonplace. Such desensitization allows predators more easily to have the next step in the grooming process. That is true. And he quickly turned this into a flirtatious sexual chat and, consider, and contain, it'll continued sending sexual commentary and photos to Regina and Sarah. Well, well, lips, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. As well as red lipstick next to Regina's name on her phone showing how she viewed these two minor... Jesus Christ. Furthermore, I'm, I'm reading this. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to read everything out loud. Oh my god, oh, I remember this tweet. This tweet right here. Like, blank bl uh, I have a meal for you. Like, holy shit, dude. Real, for real? You see on form Lane that she could have a girlfriend. The couple posted videos advertising the same. I remember that. After Sarah moved in, word got out that minor children had been moved in with Onisi and Lainey, and people in the YouTube community were not comfortable with this. This is true. Many YouTubers that were part started to speak out against him. This community got a documentary series released by Discovery Plus that featured Regina, Sarah, and other ex-girlfriends of Onisi and Shiloh. It was only after the publication of this documentary that YouTube finally decided to demonetize. Yeah, that's true. It took the documentary by Discovery Plus for the on Onision for them to actually demonetize him. And in most cases, I don't support people being demonetized, but he's actually abused so much of YouTube's policies and shit that at this point, I don't care. Ban him for the platform, I don't care. Take away his money, I don't care. Steal from him, I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, the guy has had it coming a long time. I He's the one person who I will, like, fully promote being deplatformed because of the fact of how much he's abused the DMCA process, copyright shit. It's been a, a pain in my ass for years. YouTube stated the news out to feel that it took actions because YouTube violated the partnership program responsibility guidelines. Wow. These mandate that partners not engage in behavior either off on or offline that can cause widespread harm to the YouTube community, potentially damage the trust among users and advertisers. All right, case of action. Account one, violation of the traffic. So this is where it's going to be interesting because apparently they are going for sex trafficking. But it makes me... It, 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 I, I wonder about this is because as far as I'm aware, Regina never actually met up with them, right? While images were sent b both ways with a minor, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what I, this is. This uh, let's read this. Plaintiff realleges incorporates by reference. Okay, plaintiff was a minor during all relevant times pertinent to this lawsuit. Both Anision and Laney knew or reckless disregard for that fact. The plaintiff was had not attained the age of eighteen. Laney groomed plaintiff to engage in a relationship with her, exchange nude photos of her, and cause minor player to have strong romantic feelings for her. Laney, in coordination with Onision, then used that to groom and lure her, cr recruit, solicit, and entice plaintiff to travel to their house to in purpose to engage in sexual acts with her. Plaintiff was offered something of value for engaging... Oh, was they? Oh, yeah, I can... Oh, that's where they're... Look. So... Something of value. They offered to pay for all of her transportation and stuff. They allowed the plaintiff to serve as a volunteer moderator of their channels, which made the plaintiffs feel special, and Laney was acting in concert 
uh, with Onision sh showered plaintiff with love and affection, which was extremely valu valuable to the plaintiff. I'm seeing where this is going. Lady Onision received something of value as part of the grooming and enticement for sex trafficking to wit. Lady sent CSM images to plaintiff upon request. The plaintiff became a volunteer moderator. <laughs> Defendants Lady Onision have abducted plane of serious harm including without limitations physical psychological financial and reputational harm count two benefiting from sex trafficking venture in violation of the trafficking victims protection reauthorization act all right youtube was notified multiple times when he was harming young people on his platform but continued to profit share with him and did not curtail his harmful abuse of the youtube's terms of service community guidelines you know now that i'm reading this i can kind of see how why they're going after youtube additionally because this stuff wasn't taken seriously when it was all coming out and took a documentary show for it to actually... Oh, here we go. This is significant. I'm not going to read that, but yeah. That is a crime. Punitive damages. Personal injury. A minimum plaintiff amends to seek liquidated damage amount 150000 against the defendant as well as the cost of action, including reasonable attorney fees and other litigations. Okay, so she's asking for 150000 Knowingly recruits, entices, transports, provides, obtains, advertises, maintains, patronizes, or solicits of any means, benefits financially, receive anything of value from the position, venture will engage, has not attained the age of 18, will be caused to engage in commercial sex acts. Lady in coordination with the groom, and then used the grooming, yeah. It's just repeating the same stuff. It was a victim of sex trafficking in the 4th 18 USC, which provides any person commits federal crime who... Knowingly, Lainey groomed, persuaded, induced, enticed, and coerced plaintiff to engage in a relationship with her, exchange nude photographs with her, and cause minor plaintiff to have strong romantic feelings for her. Court reward plaintiff compensatory, consequential general, and no nominal damage amount of the determined to trial. That the court reward punitive damage is damage damage amount of the determined trial. Court reward will pay the cost of the reimbursement of the action. The court will award pre, pre and post judgment interest the maximum legal. A jury demand dated February 8, 2023. It's important that I mention this is that these are actually two different law firms. And this these law firms have actually I my partner looked it up. These are really big firms who are combining and they've actually went against the Catholic Church uh for uh sexual abuse. So this is fascinating to me sad uh but i don't know is a is a jury jury's demanded what's going to happen from this i am really curious um this is the the haba law firm and you can bet your jelly beans that i will be covering this lawsuit i don't know if it's going to be recorded when it happens i don't know but i will do everything in my power to cover this because this is really I, I never thought we would be at this point where an actual lawsuit is filed against Onision and one that there is actual documented evidence to prove um, that stuff that was criminal did in fact happen, at least in regards to Lainey and Regina and Sarah. Um, and I hope maybe justice can be served. But that's all that I have to... Because again, this just dropped today. This is a lot. This is so much stuff. 48 pages. I have this link down below in the description. Um, so expand that description. Click this if you want to read the whole thing. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I'll keep you guys updated accordingly as things develop with this because I am very, very interested in seeing everything that comes from this lawsuit because this is huge. Um, and maybe justice can be served. Who knows? Thank you for watching. Uh, also, link down below in the description. Today is February 8th. I am live streaming Hogwarts Legacy um, on my gaming channel on YouTube. It's called Repsy Games. It's linked down below in the description. If you expand that, you'll see my game channel. Have a great rest of your guys' day.